take time for God and say, this is money. That's your life. That should be your life. God should be your life. He should always be first. Not second, third. Yeah. Come God on, preach, Keish. Yeah. If you come home, it needs to be God. When you wake up in the morning, God. Yeah. Come on. Yes, yes. When you at work, God. How do you think you even work? How do you think you got this game? Come How on. How much money I spent on this couch chair? This <laughs> what? Where did that come from? Leather? <laughs> Xbox cost 300 It came from me. I, I mean, I was working, you know? Come on. Nine to five. Oh, so you got that job by yourself. Because you just so great. Y'all said you gotta have a want to, so I wanted to have a job. So I got a job. <laughs> so you gotta have that same energy with God. It's the same thing. Okay, so what if I say something and I can't hear it? I don't hear it like I hear my mom and dad or you know a pastor preaching or somebody praying. Like, but you have a relationship with your mom and dad. Right. Yeah. You have a relationship. So the same way you build a relationship with your mom and dad, right with your girlfriend, your friends, whoever it is you hanging out with. Come on. You preach it, Keisha. Yes. Overnight. Come on. You got to take time. You spend time with him. When you are in a relationship, you pursue that person. Yeah. Yeah. Pursue. You don't, you don't yeah. just go, right. no, no, let me finish. Yeah. You don't just be like, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be with you. And then the girl just like, yeah, let's go. No. You got to spend time. You have to pursue them. Get to know them. Yeah, Every part of that's them. Right. Yeah. Not just, not that's just what they work. look like. Not just their favorite color. No, you got to know them. Yeah. And the Come same way now. you have to know them, you have to know God. Yeah. Yeah. If what if you I don't like reading? I don't like reading the Bible. I don't yeah. Yeah. Like you got a phone. You got this, uh, what is this, an Xbox? Xbox. You can right. download Xbox. the app and read to you. The app will read to you. No, it's still dead. Get your headphones in and go to sleep to that thing. And I bet you wake up different. Come on, come on. There ain't no, you can't give no excuses. So you're telling me if I pray every day, wake up, give it to God, seven days a week, 24 7, as much as I turn on my Xbox, that means God is going to be here with me every day, wherever He's I go. He's already with you. Yeah. He never left you. Yeah. He, he right where you left him. Oh, come, come on, on Keisha. Yeah. Girl. Yeah. So the, your last place of obedience, that's where you need to go. Come on. Come on. Give it all to God because that's that's what I do want. I do want a relationship with God. So everything that I do has to be God first. Yep. And you're saying that everything is going to manifest, jobs, house, relationships, all that is going to come for. Put him first and everything going to line up. It's going to come like, you're going to be like, where does God come from? Where does person come from? Where does money come from? Come on, girl. Put him first. I bet you. I'm going to challenge you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. As much time as you on this game, I want you to double the time you spend with God. Oh, oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. All right, I'm gonna hold yeah. you to that. Can we make a bet or something? Make a bet. You got some money? <laughs> Twenty dollars. So I need you to get up at the couch though, because listen, you was here this morning when I called you. Let's go. This is about seven hundred dollars. Snake skin. All right, we're gonna give you a thousand dollar couch. Watch this. All right. <laughs> been dealing with us with having a want to. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yes. And so the Lord has given me that script that uh, we call it a sermon illustration. Mm -hmm. It's to give you guys a picture. Yeah. And God has been dealing with me lately with illustrations and pictures and and, in, and images, and so I want, wanted you to get this image in your mind to really figure out where you at. Where are you at with your want to? With your want to? Because if you heard the man of God say that he has this want to, he desires to, you know, desire this want to, but his his lifestyle 
was hindering him from really tapping into everything that God has desire yeah. desires from him. And so uh, I want to jump into the message what the Lord has given me to tie into this to this script. And it's amazing to me when God gave it to him, he also gave me a scripture. And it lined it up with it so well. And it kind of like blew me out of the water. Amen. And so if you have your Bibles, we're going to go to this first scripture. Amen. Because it's something that you have to do with your want to. And, and our own um, uh, MIT Keisha. Yes. Let me say that again. Yes. Me, I think y'all missed it. I think you missed it. 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 Uh, our own MIT uh, 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 Keisha has said some key words in there that, uh, and she don't know what my message is all about, but she said some key words in there. The first word was obedience. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God. Second word, second word, second word that she has said that was so awesome was work. Yeah. Mm. See, you got, when you have a want to, you got to put something to that want to. Yeah. Mm. You can't just can't speak it out of your mouth. You got to put something to it. Okay, okay. All right, I'm, I'm getting too excited right here. And so, like, uh, she do not know what I was talking about, but, she, but I did give her the scriptures. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen, amen. First scripture, James 2. James 2, verse number 14. Hallelujah. And I'm trying to take my time, so I really don't want to get too excited. But uh, I want to make sure that you get it on what, what, what the Lord give, has given to me. Amen. amen. All right. So James 2, starting at verse number 14. I gave her down to 26, but we're not going to go to 26, uh, Keisha, today. Uh, I believe we're just going to go all the way down to verse number 20. Okay? So it reads here in James 2. It says, what is the benefit? Come on, look at your neighbor and say, what is the benefit? What is the benefit? Mm, what is the benefit, my fellow believers, if someone claims? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, my God. If someone claims to have faith. Ah, see, see, I know, I know we say you can't add to or put that to the scripture, but I want to just want to say something right here. It says, if someone claims to have a want to, yeah. if they claim to have a want to, but the Bible says if someone claims to have faith, but has no good, what? Yeah. Works. Oh my God. Don't have no good works as evidence. You got to have some evidence for your want to. You just can't say you have a want to, that you want Christ in your life and you want to live right, you want to do right, but you don't have no evidence. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Can that kind of faith save you? No. A mere claim of faith is not sufficient. Uh -oh. In other words, you just can't speak that want to out of your mouth. It ain't sufficient enough. It ain't strong enough to, to sustain you. Come on. See, just because you speak it out of your mouth, that ain't going to keep you. Okay, let me keep going. Genuine faith produces good works. Uh -huh. If a brother or sister is without adequate clothing and last enough food for each day and one of you say to them go in peace with my blessings keep warm and feed yourself but he does not give them the necessities for the body mm. what good does that do oh my god See, see, the problem is we just can't just tell a person they got to have a want to. Come on. See, we can't tell them that they got to have a want to. That's just like saying somebody coming to you and say they're hungry and you got food in your, in your refrigerator, but you tell them, well, just go ahead and go on about your way and we'll see about you. Well, ah, no, nah, you got to feed them. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Come on. Okay, we got to feed them. Oh, say so. Go in peace with my blessings. Keep warm and feed yourself. That's right. Ain't that something? Feed yourself. 
but he does not give them the necessity for the body. What good, what good does that do? Well. So too is with faith. So faith, if it does not have words to back it up, it by itself is dead, yeah. inoperative, yeah. and ineffective. My God, my God. But someone may say, you claim to have faith. Yeah. See, that's like Terrell saying, he was claiming that he had a want to. He was claiming, he said, I want to, I want to, I got this want to, I want to. But his want to, all it did was let him to the couch. I'm going somewhere with this. See, all it did, he had, see, we have that desire. Yeah. People have, like, oh, God, I'm trying to slow down, slow down, I'm trying to hit it. <laughs> oh, God. We claim that we have a want to. But we can't back it up with no evidence. We can't, we can't, we can't back it up. But someone may say, you claim to have faith, and I have good works. Show me your alleged faith. Show me your want to without the works. Uh-oh. Come on. Come on. Y'all better, better follow me. You're going to miss it. Show me. The scripture says, show me your alleged faith without your works. I'm telling you, show me your want to yeah. without works. Yeah. Come on. If you, can, if you can, I will show you my faith, my want to, by my works. Uh -huh. That is by what I do. What I do. Yeah. Oh, y'all better catch on. Y'all better catch on. You believe that God is one. You do well to believe that. Yeah. Mm, the demons also believe that. Uh -oh. And shut them. Yeah. In Bristol, yeah. in our field terror, they have seen his wrath. Mm, oh, God, I want you to hit that. But are you willing to recognize? Yeah. Uh -oh. yeah. But are you willing to recognize you foolish, spiritual, shallow person? Yeah. Uh, I ain't said it. The scripture said it. The scripture said You shallow person. But are you willing to recognize you foolish, spiritual, shallow person that faith without good works is useless? Uh, look at the person next to you and say, faith without works is dead. Ah, if I may use, if I may use as a title today that the Lord gave me. Come on, look at your neighbor. Come on, look at your neighbors in the eyeballs. Look at them and say, get off the couch. Get off the couch. Come on, tell them again and say, get off the couch. Get off the couch. Ah, you got to say it like you mean it. Say it like you mean it. Say it like you mean it. Say, get off the couch. Get off the couch. Okay, so when you get off the couch, this is what I want you to do. I got a subtitle with that. I got a subtitle with that. When you get off the couch, well, I want you to mix your want to well, with faith. Ah, uh, come on here. Yeah. Tell them, get off the couch. Get off the couch. Mix your want to mix your want to with faith. Ah, uh, come on now, because we need some faith. You cannot have a want to without faith. Because, because James specifically tell us that without faith and works. Everything is dead. Everything is useless. Mm, okay, okay, let me slow down because I got to give it to you. I want to read this same scripture in the message Bible. I really, I really want you to get it. I really want you to get it. I want to read this in the message Bible. The message Bible says, Dear friend, you got an S on that. Dear friends, do you think you'll get anywhere in this if you learn all the right words but never do anything? See, we got a whole lot of intellectual people out here. We got a whole, we got a whole lot of people that, 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 that can speak a thousand words and you can only speak five. So they got a lot of words they can put together. But if you don't add that to them words, and if you don't do the right thing, it don't amount to anything. And what the scripture says, in you, you, your words but never do anything with you. In other words, in the street, they say you talk loud, but saying nothing. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, I'm preaching already. I feel good already. Let me slow down though, because I want to get 
I can take off. Does merely talking about faith indicate that a person really has it? Mm, that was the question for James. James, James said it. He said, he, he said, he said, does really talking about, about faith indicate that a person really has it? For instance, you come upon an old friend dressed in rags and half starved, and you tell that person, and you say, good morning. Good morning, friend. Be clothed in Christ. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And walk off without providing so much as a coat or a cup of soup. Come on now. Oh, my God. I'm still in the message Bible. It said, where does that get you? Isn't it obvious that God's, God talk without God acts is outrageous nonsense? I can already hear one of you agreeing by saying, sounds good. I love James. He said, you take care of the faith department and I'll handle the works department. Not so fast. You can no more show me your works apart from your faith than I can show you my faith apart from my works. Faith and works. Works and faith fit together hand in glove. Mm. Do I hear you professing to believe in the one and only God? See, that's the problem. It's a whole, okay. It's a whole lot of us. There's a whole lot of people that call themselves Christians. They call themselves professing in, 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 in the word of God. They talk aloud and say nothing. Okay. They ain't got no evidence of what they speaking out of their mouth. They ain't got no matter fact, their life is not even lining up with the word of God. You say that you got a want to. Do I hear the you professing to believe in the one and only God, but then observe your complacency? Sitting back as you have done something wonderful? That's just great. Demons do that. Oh my God. Look at this. Ooh, Jesus, I'm preaching already. Look at your name and say, Demons do that. Demons do that. See, demons know the same word that you do, and all they do is sit back. All they do is sit back. They know the word of God, but they sit back and they don't do anything. Is that does that sound like you? The demons do that. But what good does it do them? Yes. But if, if it doesn't even do the demons no good. Yes. So you must understand we, we are dealing with things, principalities, and, and wickedness yes. in high places. Yes. They know everything that you know. Yes. Yes. Matter of fact, matter of fact, they already just surveyed your life. Yes. They already know that you already decree and declare that you want to want to. Yes. But if you don't do nothing to it, if you don't mix something with your want to, yes. all you is is a sounding symbol and a tingling. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You better go to first Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 1. All you doing is sounding and making a lot of noise and saying something that ain't doing nothing. Jesus, Jesus, even demons, even demons do that. But what good is that? What good does it do them? Use your head. Is that use your head? Do you suppose for a minute that you can that you can cut faith and works in two? Oh, I'm preaching already. I, I would sit down after I read this. It says, can you, can you cut faith and worse in two and not end up with a corpse on your hand? Oh, you better shake that person next to you. You better shake them, shake them. Make sure that you ain't sitting next to a corpse. 
said, no, don't, don't get mad at the pastor because the pastor is reading what the word of God says. The word of God says, you're going to end up with a corpse on your head. I'm done right there. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done right there. Oh, my God. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's the problem. Hallelujah. See, oh, Jesus. Jesus. I can sit, I, I, I can say sit down, okay, take the take take up offer and let's go home. <laughs> That's it. Scripture, all you gotta do is read the scriptures. If the scripture doesn't do anything to you, then you gotta check yourself, poke yourself, and you may be dead already. You may be dead already if, if, if the scripture don't 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 don't, don't enlighten you. Don't, don't set you on fire. You gotta check pick yourself. Hallelujah. You might be already dead. They might be already trying to do okay. Come on. That's good. So we got to know, okay, I'm trying to help you get off the couch. I'm trying to, I'm trying to help you get off the couch. Because we got some couch sitting people. Yeah. We got people that love to sit on the couch. We got men and women of God that love to sit on the couch. See, I love the way Keisha came up to up to Tarek. He didn't call him by his name. His whole name. He, she said, minister. Yeah. So what, so what did I tell you? What did I tell you? That tells me that there are some saints of God, some Christians, some saved folks that's at home having a want to, but they ain't mixing faith with they want to. They think God is going to come down out of heaven and just give them what they want. That's good. God ain't going to give you what you have, all the desires of your heart. I know the scripture said that God would give the desires of your heart, but you're going to have to do something to get it. That's right. That's right. The, same yeah. way, the same way we tell our children at home, if you want something, you got to clean your room. Yeah. I know you desire, I know you desire yeah. some things. I know that you want some things. I know you're trying to get up out of the gutter. I know you're trying to find a job. I know you're trying to find a home and a car and, 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 a, and a husband and a wife. But God is saying you're going to have to do something first. See, the problem is we think, God, we think God is a genie and all we want to do is rub on the side of the left. Oh, we think we got, he's a genie, we're going to rub on it and say, I want this, and poop, there it is. Ah, the devil is a liar. That's why, that's why, that's why the, the scripture said even the demons know. Even the demons know that you can't rub on the side of the left. You can't rub, you can't rub on it and say, give me, give me, give me, give me. God is not a give me God. That's right, that's right. That's right. Come on here. Uh, yeah, that's right. Lose me that right there. That <laughs> okay, okay. No, no, no. So I got to get you off the couch. We got to get off the couch. Come on, shake the person and say, get up off the couch. Yeah. And if you don't know how to get off the couch, I'm about to show you how to get off the couch. Get off, get off that game. <laughs> I'm about to show you how to get off the couch. And so, and so I, was asking, I was asking God, right, I was like, God, come on, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. No wrestling, no hit. I can see and preach at the same time. Matter of fact, separate. One of y'all move. I don't care what you the elder, you should know better. Come on, move. I'm in the flow, I'm in the flow. And so here, here we go, here we go. I, be, I begin to ask God up. Uh, what what do you mean? What what can we do to help the people get off the couch? Because we got too many Christians sitting on the couch playing games. They play, they play, they play games, and, 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 and they think that they want to. Their desire is going to come to them while they sitting on they on they on they do nothing, really doing nothing. But they're playing on the game. They're taking their time and playing games. Yeah. And so I said, like, oh, what, 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 what can I say to him? He said, okay, son, I want you to turn to Job. I'm going to give you all a scripture here. Turn to Job. Let's go to Job. Let's go and see what Job, Job have to say. Go to Job number seven. Job seven, verse number 13 and 14. And it blew me out the water because, you know, I was like, okay, get off the couch. He said, yep, tell them they got to get off the couch. I said, okay, but well, what are you going to give me to go with that? He said, Job 13 and 14. And here that it says, it says, when I say, 
My bed shall comfort me. My couch, come on here, my couch shall ease my complaint. Then you scared me with dreams and terrified me with visions. I was like, Lord, what are you trying to say? He said, so many people feel comfortable on the couch. See, when they get out, see, the problem is we go to bed. Come on. As soon as we get up out of bed, the first place we want to go to is the couch. Because the couch represents a familiar place. A couch is a place of your familiarity. It's a couch where your couch is where when you sit down on the couch and play your game, you feel comfortable right here. Because right here is where the demons talk to you. Right here, right here, right here is where you get all the complaints. You because you got to understand that the first place that the enemy attacks your faith in is in your head. Uh, and so, and so, what the demon, what, what, what the demon, what the spirit wants to do, he wants you to get you to a place of your familiarity, a place where, where, where you're comfortable at, a place where you're going to complain at. See, even on that couch, you're going to complain to God. You want to c complain to God the things that happened in your life, but you ain't getting up from the couch. So he said, go to Job. So he took me to Job and said, and, and, it, and it said, my couch shall ease my complaint. Here, here where you sit down. This is your place of familiarity. This is the place where even as you're playing your game, in your head, you're complaining about God. You complaining that oh, I ain't got enough money to do this. I ain't got enough money to do that. Uh, my rent is due. Uh, I can never get past. Everything always breaking down. I'm always having problems. And you complaining and talking to the TV. <laughs> but you ain't moving. So this is your this is your place where you sit. This is your complaint department. <laughs> this is where your complaint department where you let it all hang out uh, but you ain't doing nothing uh, but complaining and talking to yourself but you must understand that you may not see it but the demon is sitting in the next seat <laughs> the demon is sitting over there next to you feeding you all this stuff because the first place the enemy is coming is to your head Ah, and so and, and so he said, when I say my bed should comfort me, my cap should ease my complaint, then you scared me. Uh -huh. said, then, then you scared me with dreams and terrified me with vision. Wow. So you must understand, even, even in with Job, God told Satan, you can mess with Job, but you can't kill him. And so what God did, he attacked me, took his family, and he attacked his body. And so Job even thought that his quiet place was in his bed. He said, even in his quiet place, he said, well, he, the devil done did everything else to me. He can't do nothing to me when I lay down and go to sleep. Ah, that's the trick of the enemy. Even when you lay down in your bed, the enemy came to attack you in your dream. Your dreams and your visions got attacked. And that even your dreams and your visions scared you so much, it woke you up. That's right. Okay. It woke you up because you must understand that God said you can even attack his dreams. You can attack his visions. So you must understand, if you got a want to and you got dreams and visions, God is going to allow you to have them dreams and your visions, but your faith got to be tested. That's right. That's right. And so you have to mix your faith with your want to in order for you to get what you want. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the Bible told me about faith. It says, it says now faith. Now faith. now faith. I'm getting ahead of myself. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. See, the problem of it is that you sit on your couch for so long and you want all of this stuff, but you but 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 you desire it in your head. Come on. But you don't put it to action to your feet. Come on. You so busy sitting on your couch. Complaining and saying what you want, but you don't put no action to it. No action. See, the Bible says now faith is the substance. What is the substance? That's 
You must understand what substance is. Miles Monroe says substance is currency. It's like currency to you. So you must, your faith is your currency. But I, oh my God. Come on, come on. Say That's good. That's good. Good, it's good. Thank it's you. another word that I want to use. But I want you to understand that 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 your faith, your that substance is what's going to hold you together. Yeah. Matter of fact, that substance is that foundation yeah. on what you're going to be able to stand on. Yeah. See, because sometimes you must understand that if you want it, you got to see that you already have it. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said. That's why I said. Now faith is the substance yeah. of things yeah. hoped for. Yeah. Yeah. See, you gotta see without hope, yes. you can't have faith. Uh -huh. okay. Uh -huh. okay, so and so you said faith is the substance yes. of yes. things yes. hopeful. Uh -huh. So you gotta have hope. You gotta believe, believe. That, that that you're gonna receive yes. the substance that you uh -huh. asked for. Yes. But you gotta walk that thing out yes. by faith. Yes. 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 Just because it didn't show up today. Yes. That don't mean it ain't gonna be there yes. tomorrow. So God's time. But you gotta have enough faith today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? To yeah. so pull you all the way through yeah. to tomorrow. Yeah. Don't wake up tomorrow yeah. and sit on the couch. Yeah. Don't wake up in the morning and sit on the couch. Matter of fact, yeah. when you wake up in the morning, you gotta get dressed and get ready yeah. and start doing some work. Because with the Bible, that's the thing I read in the Bible. The man don't know the day or the hour. Yeah. So you don't know the day or the hour that your substance going to come. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So your substance is your, your substance. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I'm just missing words. Right? It's coming to me so fast, I can't even get, get the words out. Your, your, your substance is depending on your faith. It's dependent on your faith. Yes. You can't get the substance if you don't have no that's faith. Good. And you can't get and if you get that's the substance, you gotta, you gotta hope that you get it. Yes. That's good. Oh, yes. oh my God. Come on. Come on. And so and so the enemy, the enemy that talk okay, okay, I gotta get to me. The enemy loves a man that stays on the couch. Love he loves a man. He loves a man that got his own little yes. children game. Ah, he got he got children's game. Okay, I'm, I gotta hit it. You 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 actually all you doing is playing a child's game because it was designed for a child, not for a man. But somehow or another, somehow or another, the man grabbed hold to it. Come on. So you thought you brought it for your son. Come on. But it pulled you in as a man. It's in the last thing I okay. Let me finish it. And so what you did was you grabbed hold onto the game, and now that that game became your possession. And so when the son want to play it, you tell him to go to bed. And so because now now you got possession, you got possession, and you have the audacity to tell the son, "I brought this." But you brought this for the son. Yeah. And see, that's how the enemy tricked us with a lot of things in life. Yeah. Things, yeah. things that is supposed to be for the child, the parent grabs hold on to. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm, I'm trying to get to where I'm going. And so what happens is, what, what, what happens is, it draws us in. Uh -huh. It takes our mind yeah. off of the things of God. And put us on worldly things. Uh -huh. And so, so the enemy wants us to be worldly. Uh -huh. Because we are a three-part being. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm, let me back up. We are a three-part being. Yeah. And so what we do is we grab hold onto that game. And the last time I read in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Uh -huh. huh? When I became a man. <laughs> when I became a man. I put away childish things. See, but the problem of, of it is, the problem of it is in that scripture, it ain't getting no age. He said, I put away childish things. Matter of fact, I didn't even think the way I used to think. I don't do the things that I used to do. And said, it wasn't until... Come on, let your 
ready to say, it wasn't until you got off the couch. You became a man. You became a man. I lied to Adam. That's Temple Hawthorne version. It wasn't until I put away childish things till I became a man. So we have to learn how to put out, put away childish things. But the problem of it is, this is what I started doing some more research and talking to God. And this is what he told me. Yes, we are a three-part being. I thought I forgot. We are a three-part being. And so you must understand, God does not commune with us in our body. That's right. He don't commune with us in our soul. God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So that means if God is a spirit, he is only going to deal with you spiritually. He's only going to deal with you spiritually. And so the problem of it is, we look at God like he's a natural being. Because we walk in the flesh. But we are, well, we are a three-part being, spirit, soul, soul and, body. and body. So God deals with us, with us in the spirit. That's right. The soul is our mental realm. Come on! It's our mental realm. Okay? And our body, our body is our physical realm. Come on! Okay? And so, and, and so, and so, we want things from God, but we pray and talk to him like he's a physical being, like he's a physical person. Like, God, I want a car, you go get it. And you thank God to turn around and go get it for you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so you talk to him like he's, he, he's a mental, a physical person. But he's not. He's a spiritual being. He's a, he's, he's a spiritual thing. The uh, last, thing, last thing I heard in the, in, in, in the, in the scripture is first spiritual. Yeah. Then natural. And that's why Keith was saying every day when you wake up, you got to get into your word. You got to read your word. You got to be on the day and night. You got to feed on that word. Put away them childish things and get into the word. What did she say? She said you got to do the spiritual work first. You got to do the spiritual work first. Come on. you Somehow or another, we got stuff out of order. We got it. We got it out of order. You're trying to do stuff fleshly first, and I understand. I I I, I understand. I understand. I, I I hear the man now. I I I can get my own job. I can get my own car. I can get my own clothes. I can put my own gas in my car. You hear what I'm saying? I. You put I in the place of God. And see, and that's why you still ain't got your house, your own car. That's why you struggling to put gas in your vehicle. That's why you still wearing your own clothes that you've been having for the last 10 years. Uh, they probably got some holes in them and you probably got some patches on them. But that's okay. They still fit you, but you can do better. But since you're doing it ourself, <laughs> I was going to say you, you since you're doing it, I said. Come on. You're going to work and you're going to have that I stuff that you got. And so God deals with us in the spirit, in, in the spiritual sense. And so we have to feed our spiritual nature first. You have to do the first works first. The Bible tells us that in Matthew, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. So the problem is so, and, and so the problem of it, the problem of this, we, we put in soul before 
spiritual. See, but so you must understand, soul deals with your intellect, your your emotions, and and, and, and your and, and all that stuff that's going on in, in, in your head. That's why you can you can feel pain, you can feel hurt, you can feel disappointment and discouragement because be, be, because that's your soul. Your soul is responding to the way you feel, and so but that's your but that is your mental state. That's not who you are. Come on. Let me say that again. That is your mental thing. Because the problem of it is, faith is not an emotion. That's right. Faith is not an emotion. So we so busy operating like faith is an emotion. No, faith ain't an emotion. So whatever, whatever the spirit is leading you to do by faith, you are the one that's supposed to do it. You ain't okay. You, you ain't supposed to respond yeah, yeah. to the way you feel. Yeah. Because you can be happy today yeah. and, sad, and sad tomorrow. Yeah. You can be up today and down tomorrow. Yeah. Because yeah. faith yeah. does not operate by your emotions. Yeah. 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 Because if you yeah. don't have no emotions, yeah. faith is still there. Yeah. You need faith to even please God. Because the Bible says in 11 and 6 in Hebrew, it says without it's impossible to please God. You can't please nothing else unless you got faith. You got to add faith to your want to. If you want to, just add some faith to it. And God said, if you add the faith to it, you please with me already. By, by addition. Huh? That's the same way. That's the same way with making the cake. You can have all the ingredients on the table, the eggs, the milk, the mixture. You can have it all sitting on the table. The vanilla extract. You can have it all sitting on the table. But if you don't put everything together, you still don't have a cake. You don't have a cake until you put your ingredients together. So what are you saying, Pastor? You ain't going to have faith until you put all the ingredients together. You gotta put the work in. 
You can't say, I got to go to, and then when you come to church, all you do is sit down and you do nothing and do nothing. That's why we're trying to get you to get up and stop praising God. That's why you, why did you fast for 21 days? Come on. You fasted for 21 days because you had to walk to. You fasted for food. You fast for food. You fast for the things that you like. Yeah. You fasted for that. Why did you do that? Why did you lay aside those, those very things that you like to eat? Why did I lay aside drinking coffee every morning for 21 days? I was like, for 21 days, I ain't had no coffee. I couldn't put no cream and sugar yeah. up in there. I, I, could, I just had to wait. Yeah. Drinking my water. Yeah. Drinking my tea. Yeah. Drinking my orange juice. Yeah. See, I was putting my faith to work. Yeah. See, faith. My faith is going to take care of me so I don't have no desire for the worldly thing. See, coffee, coffee was a worldly thing. But see, well, what I'm going to gain by drinking some water, drinking some juice. Uh, well, see, I was putting my work in by doing that. By, by, and, and by doing that, I became obedient. Y'all missed that because... Some of y'all, okay. I mean, I'm not gonna pick up. But see, if you was obedient, yeah, 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 yeah. if you was obedient yeah. to the 21 day, yeah. after the 21 day, yeah, yeah, yeah. see, I, I see, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. I, I, I preach yeah. something. Say after that, yeah. see after that, yeah. see you, you missed it. If you ain't do 21 days, you missed the after that. Yeah. After that. See yeah. after that. See yeah. you don't know what God gonna do after yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. What are you gonna do after yeah. today? Because you was obedient for the 21 days. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, I, I don't know about y'all, but me and Pastor Naya, we're waiting for the after that. After that. We have not, we have not arrived. You think that we arrived? We have been so blessed by God, but we he ain't done yet. He ain't done yet. He ain't done yet. You think because we got a nice house? No, that was a blessing from God. We didn't get that house. God gave us that house. Yeah. It was a blessing from God. Yeah. Do you think that's it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. We want more. We want more, God. We want more, God. We want everything. Yeah. Everything. 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 Yeah. Not withholding nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Not withholding yeah. nothing. And so, I, and so, if God is not going to withhold nothing, yeah. well. Why are you withholding? Yeah. Why? 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 Take an inventory of your life. Take an inventory. Let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. Take that inventory of your life. Dead corpse. Go to Matthew chapter 7. Go there. Go there. Be our script. I'm getting ready to go. Matthew chapter 7. Verse number 24. So we gotta do something. It, it does not. It does not do you no good if you come here Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, and you don't apply what you hear. Something, something that has been said. You should have said, you know what? That didn't. That didn't apply to me. But this applied to me. Because everything may not apply to you. That's why we have to gather together as a community of people, of saints. And so whatever's been said, you just grab hold of what's what belongs to you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And don't get offended Come on. for the other stuff that don't even belong to you. That's not going to be about me. Oh, that ain't for you. That could have been for somebody else. Yes. But you told me, no, 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 no. You get what's for you. Yes. 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 Okay. 24. 24, 20, 24. It's really read like this. Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into what? Practice. If you hear the word of God, you got to put them into practice. It's like a wise man who built his house on the rock. If you put it to practice, why do you have to put it to practice? Why do you have to listen to Listen to the word of God, and why do you have to put it to practice? Because sooner or later, yes, so working your favor, yes. Huh? yes. Oh, God, what, 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 I'm feeling down in my soul. I, 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 I keep praying, God, make me a psalmist. <laughs> because sooner 
sooner or later. Sooner or later, the, the sooner or, 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 or later, the storms are going to come. The rains are going to come. It says it in the scripture. It says, the rain came down. The streams rose. And the winds blew. And beat against that house. Yet, it did not fall. Wow. See, that's, see, that, see, that's the difference. That's the difference between the people that love God and the people in the world. We respond to things differently than the world do. Because we know what the word of God says. That's why I said when the rain came, when the, when the floods came, it's going to be some rainy seasons in your life. It's going to be some rain and some stuff that will happen in your life. And then it's going to be another time when the floods come and all the gates of hell is going to be raining down on you. It says in the scripture, and the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and it's going to tear your house up. You're going to feel like you've been knocked around. But, 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 if you stayed in the word of God, it said, yet, you did not fall. You did not fall because you stood on the word of God. God, that word does not change. As soon as the rain comes, yeah. as soon as the storm comes, yeah. it does not stop there because the rain and the storm comes. It said, yet it did not fall. Why? Because it had been firmly on the rock. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, are you on the rock? You got to be on the rock. Who is the rock? What is the rock? You have to stand on Jesus Christ. Because we are going to have some rainy days. Storms are going to come. Yes, the winds are going to blow. Yeah, 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 yeah. We serve a God that is an awesome God. Yes, yes. He's an awesome God. He's a smart God. That's why he told us to be strong. Okay, don't move. That's why he said, be ye strong. And that's why he said, Put on the whole armor of God. Because we serve a smart God. And he don't say just put on the armor of God. He said get into the word. He said get into the word because the storms of life is going to come. It's going to come. But. But. Okay. Whoa, it's you. Whoa. I got to put that in there. You know, it's not about you. But means woe is you. Woe is you. Woe is you. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man. Yes. You foolish. I ain't said the scripture said you are a foolish man if you don't prepare. You're a foolish man who built it up. That's a stupid man, but I am saying. A foolish man. Who built his house on what? Sand. Sand. Then the rains came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew, beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. You just ain't gonna fall a little bitty fall. You ain't gonna fall and just scuff your knee. It's gonna be a great fall. It's going to be a great fall for you because the enemy's job is to take you out. Yeah. It's, to, it's to steal your want to. Yeah. It's to get you to the place that you even like, you know, should I, should I, I don't know. That's why Terrell was up here talking about, you know, I was making money on playing this 2K because that money became his God. All of a sudden, he was substituting God for money and he didn't even know it. And he was called a minister of God. But as a minister of God, he was still substituting God. Even as people of God, you don't even know that you're substituting all of your stuff for this worldly thought thinking process. You put things in front of God. And that's why God has been telling us all along in the scriptures, hear these words of mine and put them into practice. It does you no good if you do not put God's word to practice in your life. That's right. That's right. You have to put his word to practice. Yes. You have to get off the couch. 
You have to do something. They call that a couch potato. Uh -oh. Yeah. Come on, God. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> they call that a couch potato. Are you a couch potato? I don't know. You might be a couch potato. Let me know. We have to get off the couch, people. In order for you to be and to become the things that the, the person that God wants you to become, you have to be able to mix faith with your want to. In order for you to get to the next level, you must, you must do the mixture. You must do the works first. God is not a Houdini. He's not going to come out and make your, make your, your crooked road straight for you if you don't do anything. Because if, if, if he does that, you'll mess around and say, I did it. <laughs> you'll mess around and say, I did this thing. I did this thing. And, so, and, 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 and see, I have a problem with that with Christians too. Soon as they start becoming successful, because God has blessed their lives, the problem of it is they take God out the equation and say, I did it. My God. Yeah, that is what uh, happened. Yeah, that That's what Jerome was saying up here. He was saying, I, I did this. God did God, I, I brought this leather chair. No, that God and, and Keith came out of He came right back and said, God gave me the money to get that chair. Yeah. See, we think because we go to the job, you think that you got up, went to work, and made that money. No! God allowed you, first of all, to wake up. Thank you, God, for waking me up. Right. Secondly, you woke up and you was in your right mind. You had the activities of your limb. Thank you, God, for yeah. keeping me in my right mind. Yeah. He allowed you to get all the simple and easy things. You even walked to your bathroom and you turned on the water and something came out the faucet. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Thank you, God, for the water. Jesus, play with right. We forget about the simple things that God does for us. But the enemy's job is to keep us in the soulless realm. That's right. That's right. That's right. The enemy wants to keep you in the soulless realm. He wants to keep you where your mind and your intellect is all jacked up. That's right. He wants you to stay right there. Because we are a three-part being. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We have a spirit. We are a spirit. We have a soul. And we live in a body. And the enemy, isn't it strange? It's, it, 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 you, you have to learn the art of warfare. If you learn the art, if you learn the art of warfare, you will get this thing. Isn't it strange to me that the enemy... Don't attack you in the spirit. Come on, come on. Okay. Can't touch you. Can't right. touch you. Y'all too religious. Yeah. We are a spiritual being. Yeah, yeah. We connect with God. Yeah. That's why when the enemy went to God to talk to him about Job. Come on. He didn't say attack him in the spirit. That's right. He attacked him in his soul, yes. in his mind, in his body. Yes. Put yes. thought processes, all, all the stuff in his head. Yes. 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 And then the bad part about then he made, he lets you make the decision on what you're gonna do. Come on. Yes. He doesn't tax us because in that, oh my God. That's it, that's it. Even though the only thing that's spiritual is the enemy. Yes. Because we can't see him. But he got to step out of the spiritual to your to your mental. Yes. That may be too deep for y'all. Yes. But he comes out of the spirit to attack your mental. Uh -huh. yes. Because in the spiritual realm, he has no power. He has no power. Yeah. No power. Yeah. Because that because God is a spirit. Yeah. God had to kick him out of the spiritual realm, kick him out of heaven, because he thought he was it. Yes, yes. He had to kick him out. Yes. Say, go to the world. Boom. Yes. So and that's where the enemy attacks yes. us at. Yes. And to in our mental thought processes. Yes. 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 Into our head. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Let me say this and then I'm going to be closing. I got all these papers. I don't even know why I did. But I did. It's all right. It keeps me humble. It keeps me, it keeps me so humble that I know when I, when I minister, I ain't in my flesh. I can write 11 pages to preach and I don't use it. Because it's God. And so that's why I, I, the scripture, it says, hear these words. Yes. Don't look at the person. Uh-huh. Looks what's coming out of them. Yes. Yes, that's right. Write this down. Faith without works. Is an unchanged life. Faith without works is an unchanged life. Just that simple. If you find yourself on the couch and going back to the top to the couch, it signifies an unchanged life. And you're going back to what is familiar to you. So faith without works is an unchanged life. Your life has not changed. And I made this vow to God a long time ago. Y'all hear me, hear me, hear me this. Because when I was in the world, I was good at what I did. I was the biggest dope man that ever could have been on my side of town. And I was good at it. I was good. And whatever evil that I did while doing that, I was good at it. I was good at it. But when I made a decision that I was going to change my life, I had a conversation with God. And I said, God, I'm going to give all this up. And I'm going to live my life for you. But this is one thing that I don't want. I don't want to be fake. Yes, that's right. Yes. I wasn't a fake in the world. Yes. There was no way that I was going to be real in the world. But come on this side. Yes. Now I take on another whole different nature and become fake. That wasn't your nature in the world. Your nature was that you was a real man, you said. And you was true to what you was doing. But all of a sudden, you decided you got to want to. You come over here on this side, and you want to be fake. The devil got you tricked right there. He done changed your character just that quick. From being real and obedient in the world, from being fake and disobedient on this side. You see that change? You're not really acting in, acting the real you or who you are. Because the enemy done tricked you. So I don't know about you, but I said, God. I want to be real. Yes. I don't want to be fake. Yes. I don't want to be no chump. Yes. Yes. Definitely, I ain't want to be no punk. Yes. Because I wasn't that in the world. So when I came on this side, he showed me how to be strong. That's right. That's right. But I had a want to. Yes. Yes. Any of y'all got a want to? Yes. Yes. Huh? And that's for the young folks too. Yeah. You gotta have a want to. That's right. That's right. Because God is real. Yeah. And I, mean, I, I, I don't want to scare you. But demons are real. Yes, they are. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I don't want to scare you. Yes, they are. That's why you need God. Yes. That's why. 
Because we act out. We wonder why you act out. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. the word that went forth, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you are building us up, oh God, to have faith and have a want to, oh God. Father God, we pray, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, that you would pour and pour and pour, pour into us, oh God, your spirit, oh God, that we have a want to, oh God, by faith, oh God, to do your will. And to walk out obedience, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, we pray, God, for every person that's in this place, oh God. That it will continue to seek you, oh God. That it will continue, Father God, to have faith, oh God, as according to your word, God. So, Father, we thank you on this day. We thank you for the word that was born, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Father, we want to give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You all can be seated. We're going to transition for a moment um, to get prepared for our communion. Hallelujah. The scripture says um, that as you prepare for communion, you don't want to take communion if there's an ought in your heart. So we want you all, to, I know she just did a prayer of repentance, but we want you all to take this moment just to search your own hearts. We don't want anyone taking communion and they're not ready to take communion.